What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today we're going to talk about how to get rid of those pesky fungus gnats. Let's check it out. Before we can go and come up with solutions on how to take care of these pests, let's make sure you've correctly identified them. So these are what fungus gnats look like. They are a black winged insect and they do not bite, lucky for us. Here I got lucky enough to actually capture these things doing who knows what, but there's definitely some egg laying going on and what looks like one of them might be hatching from its like larva phase into the flying insect phase. So uh, it's pretty wild and these things do spread fast. Another way to kind of pre-determine if you have these is by looking in your soil and seeing these tiny little worms. Now this macro lens makes them look rather large, but these things are very tiny worms and these will eventually become the fungus gnat. So if you see these in your soil, you better start treating them right away. One of the first ways I like to treat my soil is with hydrogen peroxide. As long as it's less than 10%, you don't have to dilute it with water and it shouldn't harm your plants. Now, this does two things. One, it should kill a lot of the fungus and other crap growing in the soil that the fungus gnat larva eats, and it might damage and cause some of the eggs not to hatch. So it's kind of a twofold attack. Next is sort of a passive attempt to catch these things. And we're basically going to be making like almost like fly sticky traps. They do sell these in the store, but they're rather expensive and you can make a bunch of them for practically nothing. I think this petroleum jelly was like $1, the skewers were $1, and so were the plates, and I can make a ton of sticky traps. The most important part about this is the color actually. You wanna make sure you have yellow uh, cardboard plates or paper or like an orange. They like the yellow and orange and it attracts them towards it. So all you're gonna do is actually just spread the petroleum jelly on the surface of the card. In my case, I tried using like a straight edge thinking I could get like a nice even thing, but it did not work. I did find, however, that just the tried and true spoon works the best. You can just use a spoon and almost spread it like jelly on bread and it works really well. Make sure you choose some kind of cardstock that's a little thick and maybe even has kind of like a clear coating like these plates because the petroleum jelly will soak through over time. Once you have the petroleum jelly spread evenly in like a thin layer, then you can go ahead and tape a skewer on the back or decide how you're gonna secure these around like your plants. The goal of these traps are to attract and catch the adult fungus gnats so they can't lay eggs or breed. And so you just wanna position them near the plants that are affected and other plants that may not be in order to prevent them from becoming infected. Here you can see I've had these sitting out for about a week and I've caught plenty of these little flies. And again, these are all potential like parents that can just give birth to another 100 of these things or more i mean these things lay a lot of eggs this is the next step in preventing these things from coming back again and it's using mosquito bits i really like this product it's super easy to use and this stuff will last me for a very long time because of how little you actually need so I water most of my plants with just like a gallon jug and I just throw some of these schnibbles down in the bottom and that way it kind of gets in the water that I water the plants with preventing these uh, fungus gnats from growing. On top of these three methods, one of the best methods for getting rid of these darn things is not overwatering your plants. Usually overwatering is what causes fungus to grow and that's what these things eat and thrive off of when they're in their worm phase. So if you don't want these things, do really well on letting your plants dry out between waterings and keeping the top soil dry. In the past few months though, I did switch to a different watering style and that is with trays this prevents the topsoil from getting wet and getting the fungus growth so that way fungus gnats have nowhere to breed so i definitely recommend using trays because it also helps keep the topsoil dry for those of you that have stuck around this whole time i'm actually going to test these chemicals out on the larva and see what happens these first drops are hydrogen peroxide i think it's at six percent and as you can see it's irritated but it doesn't quite care it only seems to irritate the larva so maybe this is good for killing the eggs and the fungus like i said before next up i want to try isopropyl alcohol this is a lot more risky because this can damage your plants a lot easier so if you're going to attend this make sure you only saturate like the top quarter inch of the soil because if you go too deep you might hit the root structure and this will damage the roots but it does seem to be most effective because this uh insect did die lastly i tried a concentrated solution of mosquito bits now it didn't seem to affect it too much in the beginning but i think this is kind of a kill over time sort of uh, chemical so don't expect instant results this is something you want to treat your soil with for a few weeks to really get rid of them but it is tried and true so trust that it's going to work all right, guys, that pretty much sums up this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. For some reason, the channel's flat out dying, but whatever. Anyways, guys, hope you liked it. Hope it works for you. And as always, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.